In this tutorial, we'll look at triggering motion paths based on the learner's actions. So you can actually trigger a motion path when the learner performs a certain action like clicking a button. So we want them to, if the learner clicks left, then the, the square, the cube's going to animate to the left. If we click right, then it's going to pick up and move to the right. So let's go ahead and add our first motion path. So we select our object, go up to the Animations tab, Animation, and Line. And it's moving it down. That's not what we wanted. So we can choose path options and choose left. And so now it's gonna, you can see the dot, it's gonna start in the middle and it's gonna come over here to the right. And since we're gonna work with two motion paths, it's a good idea to, to name this one. So let's just come in here and name this left. And let's go ahead and add a second motion path and one for the right. So add motion path, line, and it wants to go down again. We'll just change path options to right. And let's give this a name. Okay, so there's our motion paths. If I look over here in the timeline, you can see that by default, right, Storyline's going to trigger that motion path, that animation, based on the timeline of the object. We just need to change these to fire, not based on the timeline, but based on the user clicking one of the two buttons. So let's double click this first one for the left motion path. So yeah, we wanna move the box to the left, but not when the timeline starts, but just when user clicks the left button right? Move it to the left when the user clicks the left. Click OK. And let's just change it again here for the right. So double click the trigger. And we want to move the box to the right. So that, that part's correct. Not when the timeline starts, but when user clicks the right box. All right. Is that everything we need to do? Well, let's find out. So click preview slide. Here's the move the box. Click left. And there it goes. And I click it again and it's restarting. Let me see if it any better over here. So what's happening is because the start point of the object is, is in the middle, each time we click the button for the, the animation, we're firing it from that starting point. Well, we can change that because Storyline has a relative motion path, which means that it's always going to pick up the animation on the last place it stopped. So select the object and go up to Path Options and then choose Relative Start Point. And that's how you can get the animation to pick up the last place it stopped. So let's try it one more time. All right, so we want to go to the left. There it goes. I'll click it again. And now it's picking up where it leaves off. So go to the right. And it continues. All right, so now you know how to create motion paths and trigger them based on the timeline and user events. Just remember to always change the default trigger when you're working with motion paths from when timeline starts to on click or some other user event. Go ahead and practice the activities. If you have any questions, please ask in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help you out.